Well, this is it. After completing, installing, and tuning our freshly built V8 AMG engine, we will be firing it up for the first time to see if I have any chance whatsoever of making it 700 miles back home to Chicago in my C63. I'm feeling a little excited, a little nervous, very tired, but also hopeful because with the help of my friends Rusty and Craig here at Modern Masters in Martinsburg, West Virginia, I think we stand a very good chance of this thing, you know, at least putting, putting me along back home to Chicago, at, at least, I hope. But it won't be without a ton of effort because as you can see, we still have a ton of work to do. If you guys were around for the last video, you know we ran into some snags. First, a clogged up oil pump, next, a broken front timing cover, and finally, a fire at my hotel. Nevertheless, Rusty and I pulled through and put together an absolute unit of an engine. We installed fresh cylinder heads, updated head bolts, SLS black series coated tappets, billet cam adjuster plates, and more. And now it's time to see if our efforts paid off. All right, first up, we're gonna put new seals on our cam covers. And these have the sensors built in as well. And just like that, nice and easy. Okay, this one's done too. These guys are ready to go on. And then we just slide these guys right on. Last but not least, I mean, it is the last of this. Don't get that saying. It's last and least. And then we'll just zip these guys in. And this side as well. And of course, we're gonna give them a little torque. All right, so these guys are back on super easy. It's almost as easy as winning this C63. So if you guys don't know, I teamed up with modsandmiles.com, the new cool car auction website to give one of you guys this car. And all you have to do is really easy free stuff like signing up at modsandmiles.com, literally sharing listings on Facebook and social media. They're just trying to get the word out. So there's no catch here. There's nothing to buy whatsoever. Help us spread the word about modsandmiles.com and you can literally win this C63. And if you guys haven't tried out the website yet, I highly encourage it. They've made a bunch of new changes. You can get financing right from the site I don't know of any other auction sites that offer that. You can set up shipping. You can set up a professional photographer to come out. It's free to list. So especially if you already have the pictures done of your car, maybe it was listed on Marketplace, just send them over to modsandmiles.com. They have professional writers that'll write the whole ad for you. Get your car listed, advertise it for free, no cost to you. So there's really no downsides. Check it out. I'll leave a link down below and I cannot wait to hand over the keys to this car. Well, you know, as, as soon as those keys actually do something and the thing runs. All right, new gasket and seals for our valve cover. So that's ready to go on. And we're gonna replace the seal on the oil cap as well. These guys leak all the time. All right, so fresh seal going in. Valve cover number two going on. All right, now we have about 40 bolts to tighten up. All right, we'll zip these guys in, give them a little torque. And the valve cover is done. And if you guys at home aren't going to rip apart your M156 engine yourself to do everything we did, definitely consider doing things like spark plugs, valve cover gaskets. They can cost a lot at the dealer too, and you can do them at home. Or you can just bring them to Rusty and Craig, and they'll do it for you. <laughs> All right, guys, I just got done torquing both valve covers, and now it's time for our, our big spaghetti. Our spaghetti harness with the meatballs. And we gotta put this on before the intake manifold because part of it goes underneath it. All right, now we just start clicking away at connectors and grounds. Don't forget grounds. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are moving on to front end accessory stuff like the alternator. This means we're getting somewhere, people. This thing is gonna come together real quick now. And by the way, this is still the same day of the second half of the last video after the hotel fire uh, where I got no sleep. So I think at this point, it's been a solid 48 hours that I've gotten maybe two hours of bad, bad sleep. And uh, I don't know how, but I'm like, I'm on like my eighth wind right now. I'm feeling good. I don't know if I look good, but I'm, I'm feeling good. Rusty, how you, how you feeling? You actually probably got some sleep. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty fresh. You're good? Yeah. You can go for a few more hours? Oh, I'll go as long as you need me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I don't know what I would have done without Rusty, man. He's really <laughs> pulling this all together with me. 
I am beat. Uh, right now we're putting an AC compressor on. Really no idea if it's good or not, but let's just hope the AC worked. Yeah, so all these accessories are from the blown up car. So this engine didn't come with any accessories, so we're swapping these all over. So since this engine like grenaded into 8,000 pieces, I'm hoping everything just worked fine until that point. That would be really nice, C63. I see you. You see me. I'm really tired. All right, AC compressor going in. Get these out of the way. All right, luckily our new engine came with an oil cooler, so we don't have to use the one that was on the blown up engine that had metal going all the way through it. Um, but this is a great time to replace this gasket. These get really hard and leak. So we have our brand new one going in and we'll use a little dielectric grease that works really well if you just want to lubricate seals before installing. Right, a few of these bolts are different lengths, so just make sure you got the right ones in there. All right, let's tighten this guy up. Good and snug. All right, oil cooler is done. All right, water pump going back on. All right, there we go. There's a dowel in this thing to line it up as well. All right, then a little zippity-doo. We'll do the big bolts first. And then a bunch of little guys. Next up, we have the thermostat with a brand new seal. And for this one, we have a special guest appearance. Craig is gonna put one part on this engine. But he hasn't, he's been absent for good reason because of the new dealership, RC Cars Pre-Owned Auto. Yes, sir. That's right. So if you guys need an affordable used car, this is the man, the entrepreneur, him and Rusty started a new business. So they can service your car. They can sell you a car, finance a car, finance extended thing, yeah. warranty for a car. Yep, we can do it all. Come on down to RC Cars. Actually, RC Cars. They have some really killer commercials that are just like that, like over-exaggerated used car commercials. The first word, first word, in car sales. In car sales. Cars. 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 Sales. 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 They're phenomenal. I'll link them down below along with their website if you guys need a good used car. The test though is gonna be, does he know how to put a thermostat on still? Because he, he hasn't wrenched in a while. Now he's just slinging cars out there all day. I have been slinging quite a few since you guys have started this. He sold two cars in like the last, like putting on of the alternator and AC compressor, two cars. Well, they were to my family, but it still counts. It still counts. It counts. I'm helping everybody out. But I put a couple of these on because they're infamous to break this plastic part. So. Oh, I know about that. Yep. The, the my white C63 that I bought, the guy thought the head bolts were bad. Sold it to me it for. Gets everybody. Yeah, he sold it to me for seven thousand dollars. I get home this. and this just cracked. That's the only reason why his coolant light came on. He already had the updated head bolts done at the dealer. Well, so. if you're super cheap and a DIYer like yourself, you can actually take this out because this is actually a tapped part and you can put a fitting, a metal fitting in here and make your own hose and you will never have to deal with this plastic piece ever again. It's good to know. 1 8 MPT is this threaded right here. Next up, we have a belt tensioner, power steering pump and all of the front end pulleys. We're doing a new belt and I got a nice kit from fcpeuro.com. All right, so belt tensioner going in first. And you'll see these come new with a pin right here. You're just gonna wanna leave that there until you're ready to put the belt on. Put the belt over everything, and then you can move the tensioner with a 17 mil, pull your pin out, and save it as a tool for later if you need to take your belt off. All right, next up we have the power steering pump. A couple of bolts right in front. That's not all that holds it though. All right, so the back of the power steering pump gets a bolt here and a brace here, and then we just have a bunch of pulleys to put on the front here. And she gets a little dust boot. All right, we got another one up here. Lots of pulleys going on. And last up, this guy. All right, next up we have intake manifold. We have brand new gaskets and brand new bolts. And we already replaced the PCV hose back here. You gotta put this on before you put the intake on. These go bad often, so if you're consuming oil, it might just be this. All right, with the gaskets in place, we just place these little isolator pads in there as well. Now we're ready for the intake. All right, intake time. This thing is going to look like such an engine after this. This is a big, big chunk. All right. All right. Just making sure the gasket didn't move on us. She is resting down. Nice. Let's plug in the PCV here on the back. That's definitely one of those things that's really nice to do with the engine out. All right. So with the intake on, we have brand new bolts. You cannot reuse the intake bolts. So let's get all of these in there. There are 10 of these and there is a special procedure 
to tighten them up. You can break them, be careful. And we're definitely starting these all by hand. Oh man, it's just like, this intake looks like a nice comfy pillow right now. <sighs> okay, that was enough of a power nap. It's getting dark out. I think I got two hours, two hours left in me. I wanna get this engine like ready to go in for the morning. All right, let's gently zip these guys down. We don't wanna put any torque from the electric impact into this. Zip. Zam. Noise. Okay, this scene's over, Max. It's done. It's done. So what's weird about tightening the bolts on this intake manifold is the sequence. So we're gonna do 10 Newton meters. So that's one. Number two is all the way over here. So that's all. As long as you know it, you're fine. There's a reason why the engineers set it up that way. We don't really exactly know why, but as long as you know what the sequence is, you're golden. There's our 10. And then, yeah, then it's three, four, five, six, and yeah. So anyway, let me finish tightening this up and we're almost done guys. We got some shiny long tube headers to put on and some solid engine mounts and some bigger fuel injectors, but all of that goes pretty quick. Second for the intake bolts is a 90 degree in the same pattern. So that's all done. Now we can pop our fuel rail off and do our fuel injectors. And we could have done this with the intake off, but it's actually at a perfect height right now. It's being held by our engine. So it's just gonna be easier to do. Once you get those four bolts out, these guys usually come right out. Uh, this is bringing back memories of being in Philadelphia, thinking that I was gonna pop this rail off, replace some fuel injectors and be on my way home. Gosh, that was so many labor hours ago. God, if only future Alex could have warned me. I don't know. I still probably would have bought the car I'm in it for the adventure, people. I don't just buy cars that work. I'm not a review channel. I'm a mechanic channel. We do mechanics here. We need, we need broken stuff for that to work. All right, these injectors are probably not broken, but they're too small. We're going with long tube headers and a pretty nice tune, so we're going 630 cc. All right, if you guys were with me in Philadelphia when I attempted to replace the fuel injector and drive home scot-free, then you know how to do these injectors. Actually, if you've been watching my channel for any real amount of time, you probably know how to do injectors because I do them all the time. You pop out the metal clip with your screwdriver, remove your old injector, a little bit of dye electric grease here on our O-ring, pop it back in, reinstall our clip like so, and we are on our way to more fuel. So we're just gonna repeat this. Well, in this case, eight times, eight cylinders, eight fuel injectors, and that's it, you're done. Well, then you gotta put the rail back on. You always. You always gotta do that. All right, guys, we got a water pump pulley on, our power steering reservoir on, and we're just gonna sneak this rail back in under our vacuum line. Okay, make sure all your O-rings are seated and gently push down. There we go. Tighten the rail down. And congratulations, you just replaced some injectors. Now we do need injector harness adapters. This is what the factory injector harness looks like. And our new injectors have a more traditional style connector like this. So no big deal. We're just gonna plug this end into the factory harness, clip it in, and then you just plug it in right there. And that's it. We'll just keep going. All right, guys, it's the next morning. I slept for a full seven hours. I didn't stay at that hotel though that was on fire. I ended up staying at Craig's house. I got a blow up mattress. And uh, it, it was nice. I had a good night's rest and I am fully, fully energized, ready to get this engine started. And speaking of energy, we have to install some spark plugs. We're going with some nice NGK plugs and always start these guys by hand. Don't go too crazy with your gun. When it stops, let it stop on its own, hand tighten them. These are aluminum heads after all. And this kind of stuff is not published, but I wonder if there is a number of times that a spark plug could be torqued into an aluminum head before it starts to get weak. I mean, engineers had to have tested that, right? If this was a Triton engine from Ford, you could replace the spark plugs maybe once before the threads pull out, maybe. Now I've gotten this comment a few times in my videos, why don't I put anti-seize on a lot of spark plugs? And that is because many modern spark plugs come pre-coated and you actually don't wanna put anti-seize on them because 
that will increase your torque value essentially. So the anti-seize reduces the friction and then you end up over torquing the plug. On some engines, the torque spec is really important because it clocks the plug. They all have to line up in a specific way, like the engine after this one, the M157, uh, that is a very important thing. So uh, we are gonna torque these, but no anti-seize and 22 Newton meters is all we need. All right, next up we have our ignition coils and they just pop right in. Fairly easy engine to do spark plugs on with the engine still installed. And right, we'll just tighten these guys down. And plug in our harness. And there are these little clips on here to make it really nice and tight and factory. Oh, this is looking beautiful. Well, you know what's not looking beautiful? Snow. I cannot have snow. I'm driving a C63 back home. And I'm driving to Chicago, so it's not like it's gonna get any better than this. Okay, I'll show you guys in a few hours what this looks like. Uh, I leave tomorrow morning if everything goes well. Is there anything else? Anything else, universe? All right, guys. Engine is coming off the stand and onto the cherry picker. Come on now. There we go. She's off. All right, so we're actually going to lower the engine onto a tire, uh, which will get us pretty level for the transmission. And we're gonna do the transmission first and then the long tube headers, just because we have the starter to contend with. Coming down. Okay, definitely leave the cherry picker here. We don't need this thing falling. It's one of the old tires from the car, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, we got new ones. Yeah, we got new tires. This one's not too bad. Ready? Yep. Okay. Okay, there we go. Now it just needs to come down a little. Yeah, I'm gonna get the car bar. Okay. Okay, all right. All right, we got this guy started. Bring us together. There we go. Look at that, together again. Well, actually together for the first time. 2010 E63 engine and 2009 C63 transmission. Oh, this engine had the uh, the MCT dual clutch in it, and this is not that. All right, starter is going in. All right, guys, it's header at time, and you definitely want to get the factory Mercedes gaskets. The ones that come with these aftermarket headers are very thick, and they can rattle the bolts loose. They can leak. They're they're honestly they're garbage, so don't use those. In the past, I have gotten new hardware. Uh, it's kind of expensive, but if you don't want to spend the money, you can reuse this stuff. And if the nut comes off on the stud, it's really not the end of the world. You can almost kind of use it as a bolt and that works too. So right now, Rusty is tightening up all of our torque converter bolts and I'm going to do the headers and you just want to put the bottom ones in first so you can hang the header. And this is what I mean by hanging the header. There's a slit on the bottom so you can just hang it over. Oh, and what you're looking at are some pretty awesome headers. Look at how gigantic these primaries are. These are from Victory Road Performance. I'll leave a link down below. They're actually really affordable and these bolt up to the factory exhaust. Really nice TIG welds. I used these on my last C63 and I've used a total of now three sets of headers from VRP and so far so good. So definitely check them out. And wait till you hear this guy. These C63 sound so good with headers. The factory exhaust manifolds are very restrictive, but there you go, now it's hung. And then you can continue on uh, with the top ones. So this engine came out of an E63. Those had 518 horsepower and the long tube headers are a really big deal on this engine. So is the tune. They were really holding a lot back with that. So 518 with long tube headers, some high flow air filters and the type of tune we're doing because we're going with larger fuel injectors so we can get a little bit more aggressive. 600 crank horsepower with these, it's unreal. With all the hardware on, we're just tightening everything up by hand. If you guys have been around the channel for a while, you might remember my white C63 header installation when the engine was still in the car. And if you remember that, you know how nice this is right now, because there were a couple studs on there that were broken from the previous owner and I had to drill and there's no room. It's like the engine compartment is like right here and here's the engine. That, I almost had to take the engine out. You guys, uh, if you wanna see an older video of, of mine and see how horrible that was, I'll leave the link down below. It's, it's really old, don't judge. All right, with the header tightened up, we can go ahead and install our pedestal and our VRP billet engine mounts. Pretty awesome part. It looks almost too good to be hidden down here. Factory AMG engine mounts are good, but they do wear out quite often, especially when you're pushing a bunch of power. So these will last much, much longer. And this is obviously a great time to be doing 
engine mounts while we have the engine out. They aren't too bad with the engine in, but we're not messing around here. All right, guys, this side is complete and we do have new tires on the C63, but unfortunately we have snow. It's kind of turned into rain, which is good. It's, it's clearing up, but uh, back home in Chicago, there's definitely a bunch of snow on the ground. So hopefully it's plowed by the time I leave or I just take VRP's G55. All right, guys, both side headers are on. This is it. It's lifting up and dropping in. Please get me home. Please, Mwah. Mwah. you can do it little buddy. It might be snowing. I don't know if the rest of the car will want to make the ride, but just work. All right, guys, we're going in. <laughs> Having one of these levelers on here is huge. Helps a ton. Video. Yep, let's do it. Keep going. You're good, you're good, trans is Almost, yeah, trans is cleared. Okay, we might just need to angle it my way a little. Going down. All right, let me bring you guys in here. This is what we're dealing with right now is long tube headers. So normally the exhaust manifolds, they're, they're tiny. Uh, so they don't get in the way. All of this wouldn't really be happening, but it's still easier to put the long tubes on with the engine out than with the engine in. Yeah, this side's even worse. Look at how close that is to everything. I mean, they shoved a gigantic V8 engine into a little C-Class, so it's kind of like, what do you expect, really? Oh, that is lining up much better. Oh. What are we resting on? Oh, there we go. Okay. We got Craig, we Craig in here from selling cars. Okay. Oh. All right, that feels good. How many cars do you sell today, Craig? Um, today, you know, I got one, one on the burner, so we'll see if, All I, can, right. if I can get it done. You guys got to see their commercials for RC cars. It's hilarious. They're rapping. It's Rusty and Craig rapping in these commercials. It's very produced. It's hilarious. Use car loans. Use car loans. I got to have me more used car loans. Come on down. That was actually not produced. That one that's, was just. That's just how you sound. That's just how, <laughs> that's just how I sound when the camera's on. <laughs> Do you need a way to go out and get a pack of cigarettes and not come back? RC cars, we'll get you going. Where, where are you from originally? Oh, uh, Clear Spring, Maryland. So that, okay. That's where me and Rusty are from. It's just like Western Maryland. We had drive your tractor to school day. That's day. Seriously? Yeah. Yes, what? We drive your, yeah, we really did have talk, talk drive your tractor to school day? Yeah. Definitely didn't have that in, in Chicago, where I'm from. You guys didn't like take your push mowers or anything? No. Man. Just. Yellow school buses. Yellow school buses and pollution. That's about it. Uh, we're hung up on this this engine mount right here. But I think. Oh, hang on, hang on. We're gonna probably just pry that. Let me get let me get big big Bertha over here. Yeah, it needs needs to go over over yonder, fellers. See, I'm speaking I'm speaking Maryland talk, I guess, <laughs> right now. That, it's it's Western Maryland. Right? Western Maryland. That's different, right? Yeah. All right, Rusty's gonna lower the trans right now. Go ahead. This is. Sparta! Boom. <laughs> oh, yes. Woo. All right, we're going down. Everything is lined up. It should fit right onto the subframe now. There we go. Yeah, it should be good. Oh, there you are. You're home. You're home, little buddy. All right, guys, before we put the radiator in and everything, we need to install our new serpentine belt and I don't have the diagram in front of me, so let's just kind of see how this goes. If I remember it, maybe loop it around here. That looks about right. There we go. I also knew how it went. You knew how it went too? You guys are just watching me. All right, so we'll get it there. All right, here we go. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> it's like a teeter tine engine right now. Get on there, Bill. Once everything is lined up, you pull out your little pin and save it for the next time. It's now a tool that you can use to hold the tensioner in place while you get everything situated. Right now I'm cleaning out the engine oil cooler. We're gonna flush this with oil as well. Really want this clean because there was metal. There was metal in this engine, that's for sure. Brake clean's thinning it out for sure. We'll wait till this is clean. Oh yeah. 
We're gonna clean out these lines as well, the oil cooler lines. And there is another engine oil cooler right in here. I think the filter would have grabbed everything first, but you never know. Yeah, we dumped a bunch of brake clean in this guy, clearing all the lines. All right, guys, it is radiator, condenser, and all of the coolers time. And this is a nice compact unit. Everything's attached to it. There we go. All right. I thought we could sneak this in with the trans cooler, but that is not the case. Okay. Whoa. All right. She slides in. All right. Uh, let's make sure we got the rubber mounts. Isolators are in. Nothing fell out. All right. All right, so I just got done blowing out the other engine oil cooler so we can go ahead and install this guy. There was no metal whatsoever in here. Okay. All right, with that, we'll put our upper radiator support mount on. All right, lock these in. All the coolers are buttoned up. Everything is connected. It's time for our front bumper. This has a pretty cool carbon fiber lip on it. I actually really like it. Oh, okay, hang on. Yep, there we go. Oh, it's looking like a real car. We're gonna work smarter, not harder here. Get these bolts when it's up in the air. Big fan of the color. It's gonna be nice again, I promise. Uh, we're getting the uh, drive shaft in first. This guy's got a center support bearing, so it's a two piece. There we go. He's in. Oh yeah. Yeah, the brakes have seen better days. A little rusty. Hopefully these will clean up, they should. Uh, we got engine mount bolts to do. All right, next up we have the steering shaft going back on the rack. And guys, let me tell you, don't break this. They don't make them anymore, they're super expensive. The one on my ML55, they were selling for like 500 bucks used on eBay, it was ridiculous. All right, we did drop this rack just to bring all that stuff down so when we were putting the engine in we didn't accidentally hit it. All right, so we got the bolt in there, tightened up, and then we can go up with the rack. All right, we got the rack plate installed. You hear that, guys? E55 just started up. Cold start. <laughs> yep, classic. All right, guys, we're putting in some really cheap oil, 540 synthetic, just not, not the good stuff because we got to do a little flush first. All right, guys, check it out. Our cluster is lit up, and Craig is zipping in our tune right now, so this is a VRP tune. So we told the tuner we have the long tube headers and the 630cc injectors. He emailed us our tune file, and we're zipping it into the computer. Oh, and look at this. The tow hook cover. Sweet. Oh, this guy broken. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna stay. All right, I guess I'll just take this home with me in the in the car. All right, guys, it's airbox time. Uh, both of these have a mass airflow sensor, a piece in them. Two master technicians, one airbox. There we go. All right, now the other side. Click. All right, we have air filtration. You need that. I'm getting nervous. Yes, I am. We are almost at the first start, people. All right, guys, we're just about ready to put the exhaust in. I filled up the power steering fluid, and we got issues. We got issues. Look at that. That is not good. I am hoping that is old power steering fluid. I saw this boot was a little wet when I first got this car. I didn't think much of it, um, but... I mean, I'm squeezing fluid right out of here. There was a lot more too. I just put that down. So basically the seal right here in the rack is probably leaking. This is just a dust boot. This doesn't actually hold fluid or anything like that. I mean, it does when it leaks from here, but this isn't normal. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna squeeze all of this out and hope when we start it that we don't have that bad of a leak. I'm gonna assume we have a leak for sure, but I can limp it home if it's dripping, but if it's spewing out like that when it's running, we're gonna be in really bad shape. All right, before we do the exhaust, we are gonna do a transmission service. We already drained some of the transmission fluid before, but now we're, we're taking the pan down. While we're in there, it's funny, we know for sure the original engine was bad, but we have no idea what the condition of the transmission is. This engine might run fine, but we need it to shift. Hopefully we don't see anything in here but fluid. 
No big chunks. Fluid doesn't look too bad either. Let's pop this guy out. There we go. Rusty, you see anything weird? I do not. Okay. Magnets look. Yeah, magnets are good too. Okay, I'll take it. This is good. This is not good. Yeah, I'm just cleaning the mating surface. And then with the 722.9, you have to replace the bolts. <laughs> All right, here's the transmission filling machine. This thing is really nice. Wow, it automatically sets the pressure and everything. Some high tech stuff. All right guys, it is shiny exhaust time. So this comes with the header kit. You get all the pipes to connect to the factory exhaust. And I gotta say, Fitment when I did this last time was pretty good. Okay. How you feeling? I'm feeling tired, a little tired, but uh, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter how I feel. I have to leave super early tomorrow morning. This has to fire up. I will stay up all night long to get all the bugs worked out or whatever, but there's gonna be no bugs. It's gonna be fine, except for that power steering leak. All right. No. There we go. Look at that, it's beautiful. This is gonna sound so good, guys. A big modification on the E55s is to get C63 mufflers. I did this to one of my other E55s. It sounds perfect. And this is the C63, it's got the mufflers. Now we have long tubes. This is gonna be one of the best sounding engines ever. All right, we just finished up the exhaust. We have O2 sensors, we have clamps. Everything is cleaned up. There's our trans cross member. Everything connected up, looking good. All right. C63 is coming down. And I'm a little nervous right now. I mean, Rusty and I went through this engine with a fine tooth comb, although I haven't been here long with both of us working on it at the same time. I think we're gonna be fine. I think everything is gonna be okay. We might have a couple little snags here and there, but overall, I'm pretty confident here. So right now, uh, we are gonna turn the engine over without starting it just to prime the oil, get it to flow, and then we're firing it up for the first time. Less than 12 hours away from when I'm supposed to drive this back home 700 miles to Chicago. All right, so we pulled the fuel pump fuse, but we accidentally primed this rail when we were doing the tune. Uh, and I do not want this engine to start. So check this out. We installed a toggle switch starter relay. This is really, really cool. Uh, so that I can just spin the engine over by hitting on right now, which I'm going to do for the first time. So here we go, people, here we go. Oh, it sounds good. All right, I'll let the starter rest for a little bit and I wanna prime the engine a little bit more. I really wanna get that oil pumping all over the place so we are properly lubricated. Okay, that's enough time, let's crank. Oh, that sounds beautiful. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Let's hook up some fuel. All right, since we cranked the engine over, our power steering went back down. I had filled this all the way, but cranking it over is good for priming the engine oil pump, but also for priming the power steering system. All right, I might as well just check this engine oil as well since we had both of the coolers totally empty. And we will be doing an oil change anyway, but I just wanna make sure our level's good. Yeah, we're a little low. That's about right there. We'll just add a little bit and we should be good. You ready, Craig? Um, as ready as I'm gonna be, I guess. You're I'm, like, I don't care. I'm going home after I mean, this. It's been I'll a couple be days. Been a couple <sighs> days of you being here and uh, I'm not getting paid. So yeah, I want this thing to fire <laughs> up and get on out. Rusty, I know you're not happy to see me leave, but. What do you think? I'm happy to see the car leave. Yeah, that's true. This thing's been here for what, three, four months now? Yeah. Taking up room? Storage is racking up. <laughs> All right, guys, you're here with me. First start, C63 AMG. It's been a long time coming. Rusty, let's do it. Sounds good. That's pretty uneventful, actually. Oh, with these tunes, they don't, they don't really have that high idle, right? Yeah, they get rid of the high idle. That's why it's not idling at like 1300 RPM. Anyway, let's listen. All right, we got all new tappets. It might just take a minute here to get rid of the tick. It runs beautifully though. It's not misfiring. I don't even think we have any exhaust leaks. It's perfect. All right, we'll just give it, we'll give it some time. It'll, it'll be good, it'll be good. Just, uh, just go away, go away, ticking noise. While the ticking noise is working its way out, let's go over here. Oh yeah, it's running good. We're not getting any abnormal smoke or anything. It is cold in the shop right now, so a little steam. I'll bleed out the power steering, but I think we did that during cranking, so that's nice. She's starting to quiet down a little bit. The engine fan just came on. We're bleeding the cooling system. Uh, these larger fuel injectors are a little bit louder. They make a little tapping noise, but overall it's getting better and it's running perfect. We've just had it running for a few minutes, just trying to get it up to operating temperature, and then we're gonna change the oil, uh, but it is definitely getting way quieter now. 
And with all of those new tappets, this is pretty normal. Actually, on some of the Mercedes, if you let them sit for a few months, if they have lifters that are a little worn out, you'll get a noise just like this and it'll have to run for a long time. Like my E55, if I let it sit in the winter time and then I fire it up after like three, four months, I have to get it up to operating temperature to get rid of this ticking noise. I basically need to do the lifters on it, but they just bleed down. All right, we just pulled the oil filter out. It's given an inspection. We're gonna be replacing this as well now that the engine went up to operating temperature, but we're good, no metal. All right, let's see. Are we gonna get any more? Oh no, we're good. Yeah, we're good. I squeezed out pretty much all of it. So that doesn't mean we don't have a rack leak, but I think everything that was in there had been leaking probably over the course of many, many months, potentially years, who knows? So I'll have to fix that, but we should be good for the ride home, at least in the power steering world. Definitely bring an extra. Everything else looks really good though. We don't have any exhaust leaks. Um, we're good, we're good. We're just gonna do our oil change right now. We did put an additive in here, it's gray. So it might, yeah, it's gonna look gray. That's totally normal. No chunks. We also have all that engine assembly, lube and everything else. So it's good to get it up to operating temperature and then just do an oil change, burn, you know, 80 bucks in oil and a filter and just do it. All right guys, we're going back together with some more oil and a new filter. Uh, look at this, we got a fancy funnel for the second one. That is pretty neat, I must say. You gotta get me one of these. All right guys, we let it run up to operating temperature once again with our new oil and filter. And she sounds absolutely perfect. Whisper quiet, super smooth. Uh, we already checked it for leaks while it's running. No leaks, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. So we are good. We are good, people. I think I'm gonna make it home. I hope, I really, really hope. But right now this thing is just perfect. All right, I probably shouldn't get too ahead of myself. We have to check the transmission fluid level uh, and then go out for a spin. It's really dark, but I'm keeping the cameras rolling. We got to see if this transmission shifts. All right, we're up to operating temp. Rusty, give it a little love. <laughs> Dude, that is so good. This is stock. Okay, we just have the headers on here, stock mufflers and everything. Listen to this monster. <laughs> this is so good. Oh man, and with the tune, it's gonna feel amazing. I cannot wait to get behind the wheel. No smoke, no nothing. This engine is solid. All right guys, so we put the VRP intakes on. These don't add any power or anything like that. Um, but the factory plastic ones, they crack all the time. So if you wanna replace them with aluminum, you can go with these. Personally, I do like the look of the factory one, so I'm gonna paint these black and see what I think uh, when I get back to Chicago. Um, and we need to put our little star back on, but other than that, let's cruise. Last thing before we leave is filling up the AC. We pulled a vacuum for about 20 minutes, no leaks whatsoever, and now we're charging her back up. All right, but now, seriously, after we put away the machine, we're going for a ride. All right, guys. Here we go. We have scanned for codes and everything is good. Let's see, let's put this in AMG mode. And this is pretty cool. This thing has an updated screen. I think this has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I got my phone mount in here. Let's turn some heat on because it's freezing. And even though we know the engine is good, we have no idea if this transmission works. So, okay, we're moving. It at least has first gear. Oh man, this is crazy. I'm amongst many, many other Mercedes, lots of M156 cars with cam issues. They have four of them right now where they're getting cams, adjusters, tappets. It's insane how many issues these cars have with the top end, but Rusty can do them in the sleep now. It's pretty awesome. So the snow is basically all gone. It was snowing all day and then it rained for like four hours. So we're good. <laughs> There's still no traction. It sounds good. It shifts good too, people. Oh yeah, perfect. We're going 50 now. And uh, it's straight as an arrow. The alignment's good. Wow. All right, cool. I'll take it. Oh, it shifts so well. Sounds so good. <laughs> it does a little rev match. Oh man, I can't wait to rip into this. I love the seats in these C63s. They're very bolstered. These things handle so well. All right, let's do a little paddle shift. Oh my gosh, yeah. That was 40 with like an eighth throttle and it just lights them up. I mean, it's wet out right now. 
Oh, this thing's gonna be a blast when it's dry and a little bit warmer out. The tune we have in here is by the same guy that tuned my Whipple wagon and my CL65, which I still need to put on the dyno, but they're very tested and proven and he's got an awesome M156 tune. I'll link that down below, VRP sells them. The drivability is perfect and they really pump up the power, but safely. These roads out here in West Virginia are pretty cool. Definitely not the safest thing though to be going crazy here at night, especially since the roads are slick, but man, do I want to. And the brakes feel really good. They're cleaning up. I think we've probably got all the rust off the rotors by now. And uh, yeah, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. But yeah, guys, we're good. First start, first drive in the C63. I gotta say, I'm feeling pretty darn good about this drive back to Chicago tomorrow morning. So anyway, Rusty and I'll drive it around uh, for probably another 15, 20 minutes and then go back to the shop to check everything out. All right, guys, we're back at the shop. Rusty and I lifted the C63 up in the air for the last time. We looked over everything and it is perfect. Knock on air. So I just wanna say a big thanks to this guy right here. I would not have been able to do this so quickly without him. He is a master tech in every sense of the word. And if you guys need your car fixed right the first time and you live anywhere near Martinsburg, West Virginia, come to Modern Masters. These guys are amazing. And RC Cars, they sell cars now and there's a good chance Rusty inspected it and fixed it. So it's gonna be a good one. So I'll leave their links down below. And with that, if you haven't already, give this one a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to tune in for the next video to see if I made it home. As much as it's fun to break down and have to fix things in the middle of the street, it is really cold and snowy out and I just wanna make it home, but that'll be the real test of our work. So make sure to tune in for the next video and I will see you all then.